Welcome back to the channel. I've got a good one for you today. We are going to restore this ATC 200X. It is in really, really faded condition. And there's like lots of pieces missing. For instance, the rear, rear brake caliper the original exhaust. The rear fenders are like almost non-existent. There is no seat. Things like this. And look at the screws. Someone put in different screws. So, what a challenge, huh? Well, let's get right to it. If you're watching this, it's because you don't like all the baloney that you hear on these channels that go on for 30 minutes before you even take the seat off. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just spray this down and get as many of the cobwebs off of as I can before we do uh, you know, our initial uh, look see and evaluation to see what we're going to probably end up needing to buy and what to replace and what's going to get rebuilt so let's get right into it with the seat off <clears throat> we've got access to the carburetor and this looks really 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 untouched and one reason i know that is these bolts right here are always missing a washer they they, you know, throw them on the ground and then they put a bolt through here. All sorts of nastiness, shenanigans. So the first thing is to get the carburetor off, but I want to show you the tank. There's not a dent in this tank. It's absolutely perfect. I mean, it is really, really unusual not to have a dent in the tank somewhere but this is obviously faded but it could be that this is the color i'm still looking and researching because it's uniform all the way around it could be a kind of a different look but i've got a little issue in here oh, i'm gonna have to get the light i think you can see down in there it's you know, it's bad. It's definitely not a great situation, but let's see if I can move the gas around a little bit for you. Yeah, there you go. You see? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about, you know, obviously first I'm going to get the rust removed and uh, I'm going to see about a colored tank liner. You know, the... Uh, Stuff I use is clear, and it ends up showing the rust that remains. And there's always some rust that remains and some corrosion. That's why you're putting the liner in it. But uh, I do think, I do think that a colored liner might really work well with this. So we'll see when we get to that point. But this will be a piece of cake to paint. Well, of course... The slide does not want to come out of the carburetor, so I've got to pull the cable from the thumb throttle. But this is a really good example of how plating is different. You see, this is a gold, and this has been untouched. Uh, I just bent this tab down, but this... This bike, I do not believe, has ever had anyone in this thumb throttle. And you can see the silver or the blue chromate here. Now, the zinc plating is still intact. It's not faded or corroded. But the little washer is a gold anodization. or uh, Basically, what this is, is it's gold zinc plating. It's zinc plating with a chromate dip afterwards. So, this is really, really interesting and and helpful to see that if I'm I'm looking at a gold plate on this bike it's most likely not aged it is most likely 
the original color that they plated it from the factory. So this is just great stuff here. These are a black chromate. And I say chromate because that's how I'm going to replate them. I'm going to replate these into a black and all of the associated hardware. Also what I'm going to do is I'm going to plate the Kickstarter, the rear brake, the pegs if I can. Because all of this stuff here, the brake lever, all of these pieces were not painted from the factory. They were a chromate. And you can see these because this bike is a, this is an original item here. This has not been repainted. So you can see that this stuff here this is all a I call it blue chromate because that's what you dip it in, but it's just a silver. You know, it's a, a silver. And then the little bit of a kind of a gold hue you see to it, that is from aging. These, This was silver, I'm almost positive, because if you see underneath here, where nothing has ever touched it, this is a blue, you know, a silvery blue, which is like a bolt you would get brand new out of the box. So to keep all this stuff straight, I'm going to have to clean it very well and decide which gets what kind of chromate because this is not a black but this is black probably went into that a little too long but i just wanted to go over the the plating that we're going to do on this so a carburetor rebuild is what we're looking at here on a 200x and of course you get the carburetor off this one i had to take the cable out of the thumb throttle and here it is disassembled now what I wanted to show you was this was absolutely welded I mean I call it welded but it was stuck in the body and I used a huge amount of PB blaster and weighted and weighted and that didn't do it um, the needle and seat was stuck in there. So everything was like glue. I mean, this is typical of a bike that's been sitting for many, many years. So what I wanted to share with you was I took the map gas torch and I heated the body and I was actually holding the carburetor by this cable and the slide was inside the case here. Completely seated, completely welded in there with, you know, old gas. And so heating up the body very carefully, I just did little blasts all the way around, little blasts of heat. And as I was holding it, I could feel it start to slide out of the body. Now, before that, I tried using a screwdriver to pry through here. Try to pry that slide up and it was not moving. And I mean, I put a pretty good, pretty good amount of force on it. So now that we've got that out of there, it's time to make sure all of the parts are original as far as the sizes. Now, I could not find anywhere in the manual what size the pilot was but I'm showing a 40 and I don't think this carburetor has ever been apart and then a 108 on the main jet so now that I've got this off I can disassemble this part and we can get all of this stuff into the Berryman's carb cleaner when you're disassembling it the right here where your mixture screw is this is it right here and then you've got the little rubber o-ring then you've got the steel little small washer and then the spring 
I created this little tool out of a paper clip and what it does is it goes right on in there and it'll hook out these two little pieces there it's very handy so you disassemble everything and then anything metal is going to go ex with the exception of the spring it doesn't go need to go in there but it will all go into the carb cleaner for soaking and now i'm noting something that i think might be a little unusual uh, this is usually on the third or middle slot, and it's actually on the fourth. So I'm going to have to look into that. While I'm waiting for the carbs, uh, the parts, and the carb being dipped, I have a China Diner carburetor I had new in the box. So I installed this, and I just... I'm continuing to move forward to try and get this bike so that I can go out and and really give it a run. I don't. I'm I'm not going to do uh, what I've done in the past, which you know I don't do it all the time. But sometimes I just get anxious and I I hear it run. I drive it around the neighborhood and I go, oh, okay, it runs. It it shifts. Let's go ahead and re you know restore it, only to come back after I. You know, spent hours and hours and hours painting the motor and and everything else to find that, you know, it, it like doesn't idle right or it, it doesn't have the power it should or it needs work on the, uh, you know, piston, whatever. So I'm going to go out of my way to really give this a tear. So um, we've got that carburetor installed. Okay, so the carburetor works. I'm going to show it running here in a little bit. But I can't really run it because I tried. I took it out and I went through all the gears. They, all the gears worked. <clears throat> but with no brakes, it became rather, <laughs> rather dangerous. I almost went through my gate. So uh, luckily I figured at the last minute I could turn the wheels and that, uh, because the live axle in the rear, uh, that, that immediately slowed me down to a stop. So, thank goodness, I'm still here with you. So, the next thing is the brakes. Um, you know, I've got what's left of the original brake line, but no caliper. And somebody up here has put a nut and bolt instead of the screw. So I don't know if this is all thread, you know, threads are all messed up. Mismatched screws, faded out uh, brake fluid reservoir. And I don't remember for sure if these levers were black or silver, but it sure looks like they're silver um, unless they've been replaced, which, you know, that's probably more what happened than anything so we're going to get on to the brakes the rear brake when it was on here the lever would go a certain degree and then it would just stop so it led me to believe the piston was frozen in the in the master uh, and it had no rear caliper but we're going to focus uh, on the master So remove the master like you normally would. I've got the master on the bench. And sure enough, the piston is frozen down there. So now there's a spring that's located behind this piston. And it's frozen enough to where it won't press it back to, you know, the original position so what I've done is I went to my grease cirques and I got the metric and inside they've got plenty of sizes but there is one right here on the end that will fit now it doesn't thread a hundred percent 
but it's not going to mess up any threads. So I'll install that. So it had about, I'd say it went around one revolution is all before it tightened up. So it could be a different thread or it could be pipe thread instead of, you know, just normal thread. But it doesn't, I, I'm going to give it a try. And to be honest with you, I've already done it. Um, it, it will work and it doesn't leak. So don't be afraid if you can get two or three threads or, you know, maybe a half a turn or three quarters on there, it might be enough for you. So pop on the grease gun and let's give it a try. It's taking it. Oh, look at that. Looky there. So that piston, oh, that's wonderful. That's a wonderful sight because you can really have a hard time finding any of this stuff. Um, so now that the piston's out, just take a screwdriver and push on the little rubber, however you want to do it to get the grease out of there. We're going to clean it anyway, but it'd be nice to get the majority of it out of there. And let's get the rubber. There's another part in here. It's a rubber cup. So greasy and hard to get out. Come on now. Yeah, it's greasy. And there it is. So you got a spring that looks to be the narrow part is towards the cup. So you got the spring and you got the cup. And then you got the piston. Like so. Now this part here is all one piece and this snap ring will probably come with the kit. But what happens is this presses on this. So basically here's your layout. Just in case you're interested. I mean, I don't do these every day either, so uh that's pretty much your setup. And I'm doing this as much for me as it is you because I'm going to look at this video when I'm putting this back together. So you got the long spring, you got the little cup, that would be the seal, and then you got the piston and uh, the piston itself. There's a seal on it, another seal, and then you've got the, the arm that attaches to the foot peg, to the foot lever. And there you go. So I'm going to order a rebuild kit. Now the interior of this, I'm going to clean it up and we're going to take a look at it. Well, I'm waiting for the carbs, uh, the parts, and the carb being dipped. I have a China Diner carburetor I had new in the box, so I installed this. And I just am continuing to move forward to try and get this bike 
so that I can go out and, and really give it a run. I don't, I'm, I'm not going to do uh, what I've done in the past, which, you know, I don't do it all the time, but sometimes I just get anxious and I, I hear it run. I drive it around the neighborhood and I go, oh, okay, it's runs. It, it shifts. Let's go ahead and re, you know, restore it only to come back after I've, you know, spent hours and hours and hours painting the motor and, and everything else to find that, you know, it, it like doesn't idle right, or it, it doesn't have the power it should, or it needs work on the, uh, you know, piston, whatever. So I'm going to go out of my way to really give this a tear. So, um, we've got that carburetor installed and I have ordered a lot of parts. So something else I tore apart here. And I'm letting it sit. I've got some movement in the piston, but enough to where I think I can rebuild it, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to rebuild this one with these screws that are just rusted in. God knows what I'm gonna be looking at getting all this cleaned up, but there's a possibility. So, see it run here if I can get it running again because I've got to move on to the carburetor which has got to come out of the the carburetor dip so let's see if I can get it running so here it is happy with the way it runs. And I know that it'll run a lot better once I adjust the cam chain and adjust the valves. But this just gives me, you know, enough faith to go ahead and order a few things for it. It also gets the oil working around in there. But I'm definitely going to go out and shred it up a little bit before I dive too deep. So, there you have it. She's a runner. That's my on and off switch. So what I got to do now is go back and show you some stuff with the master brake. Taking off this piece here, I, I believe I ordered a new rubber seal here, but you can see that there's grease in there. So I want to clean this out, get it shined up, get it ready, and get some rear brakes. So we'll come back to the brakes when all the parts arrive. And now all the little parts are clean. I'm going to spray these, get a little, a uh, little deeper in there and make sure that the pilot is freed up and the main. And now I wanted to show you something. This is Rocky Mountain. This is the parts that I ordered yesterday. Ordered them Monday at like 9 in the morning, and they're here Tuesday around 1. Now that's because I live in Reno, and they're in Utah, and I think they're on their, the truck is on their way to California, and they just drop it off. So anyhow, it's not always that quick. They've been using the postal service, which is, you know, four days, three days, four days, five days. But I'm just happy, so I've got everything I need to put this back together. Oh, so I unpacked everything, and here's the Honda kit. And I always put this in here, and I'm never really sure why. It's kind of in Japanese, so. Really, the biggest thing is that, the float bowl. 
these are all biggies too, but in reality, I have extras of almost everything. So, let's get started. Since I don't want to spend a million dollars, and I've, I've been able to get away with these needles and seats by actually cleaning this a little lacquer thinner, and uh, this is my little cup I use just to clean this stuff up. There's a lot of varnish on these, but they'll come clean and uh, let that needle soak in there. And we're going to take our glass cooktop, and that what we're going to use that for is it is actually in a small abrasive and uh, kind of a polishing compound for the inside of this seat here so the needle has a nice bright shiny surface to seal on so take a q-tip put it in your drill shake up the glass cooktop and just dab a little on here and give it a little little spin there look at all that dirt so what I do is I just keep keep going with a fresh Q-tip and a little bit more. Look at that black come out of there. So I'm just going to keep doing that until I get a nice shiny surface. I think you can see down in there. You know, it's the brass is polished up. There's a nice little seating area there. And it took me about that many. And some of them, you know, got pretty dirty. There's quite a bit of, you know, corrosion on that brass, but it's all cleaned up now. So I'm going to spray this back out with brake cleaner. Make sure I get all that compound out and then uh, blow it out and we'll be ready to go. All right, so like I said before, this, this seems to be down here in the lower channel. It should be the third slot. It's in the fourth. And I think what they were doing here is it has a, a super trap exhaust and they drilled a couple holes in the top of the air cleaner. So I think what they're trying to do is richen this up a bit. So I'm going to leave it uh, because I don't know what I'm going to do exhaust-wise. I'm probably going to go back to the stock exhaust and find a stock lid to that air cleaner, which means I'll probably just pop this back up one down the road uh, when I'm sure that's what I'm going to do. I may not do it. That, that Super Trap's kind of a cool exhaust. It's kind of period correct. So we're, going to, we're just going to build it back the way it was. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install the emulsion tube is what I call it and then the main jet and let's put the pilot in let's verify it's a 40 so I did have to pull one out of my jets because the one that was in it was so plugged that it wouldn't even soaking it didn't come clean so Put that in there. And just slide that up. And in the main, I got that here. Tighten it up. So, it's time for the needle and seat. I've cleaned it up, came real clean. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to give this 
a little shot just a little bit of lubricant in there and I'm gonna take out you know any of it that's in here not gonna hurt anything but I think that that rubber would will really enjoy that little bit of niceness there we go and let's see I'm not sure if this is supposed to have a spring loading or not. I'm going to tear this back down. So this is, uh, you're going to notice that there's going to be a spring loading now. This little pin was stuck in there. It was actually stuck out. And then I put a little bit of this lubricant on it and pushed it all the way in. And now we've got a spring action on it and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to clean it out with some brake cleaner and then maybe even give it a little bit another shot of lubricant but i think we got it okay so i've got the pin she's located now let's see it should rest yeah there we go there's our spring loading so that's how you set your float height is you don't let it sit all the way on it like this or else it's just gonna give you a false reading and so you get it a little sideways where you can see it's just hitting the little pin but the spring hasn't collapsed at all that's where you're gonna get your measurement so let me show you you set the micrometer on 14 millimeters that's what the float height should be and we're gonna use this end here and we're going to let it just rest against that and then measure it. And the top of that float is right at 14. There's no adjustment on this. So it, it either it's either good and who knows, there might be two, two millimeters, you know, play either way. But we're in good shape. So we've got the prime or the uh, pilot. The main, the float, and the last thing we're going to have to do is index this. And I've got a picture that I'm going to refer to. You really don't even need a picture because if you can look where this is, it's offset. It's offset to one side. And I believe if I do this right, we're going to be wanting it right about... Right about there. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So there it is. Got that in its proper spot. So now it's time to put the new float bowl gasket in. Hopefully it just lines up and holds itself in there. Yeah, looking pretty good. Now the factory's got a little bit of a glue sort of situation on which I had to work to get out, but it looks like it's seating in there pretty good. So just make sure we got everything in here. And it always helps to have many, many pictures. And that just confirms where that plastic piece is, uh, you know, where it's located. 
exactly where it goes back in. So I like the way that's sitting. I am going to turn this upside down and that's not going to work. I hate to think about so I'm going to try it this way and I'm going to keep a close eye on that gasket. Oh I think I got it. And I'm going to hold it tight here. It looks good to me. And I'll get these screws in. So it's a little bit of process of elimination. I kind of know where all these go, but I'll take... I've got these two small ones here. I pretty much know where they go, but I know for a fact that these two small ones go on to the mixture. Well, I thought I had a picture of which spring went with which needle, but I'm, I'm fairly positive. I don't even think this one would fit over that. No, it's not. So that's the spring. That's that. Let's go ahead. And, and I know I took pictures of these before I put them in the dip, and I don't know what happened. They're gone. They're not around. I looked everywhere for that picture. See if we can get that little brand new metal washer out of there. So we'll put that like so. A little metal washer. And then the rubber O-ring. And that slides up onto that thickest part of that needle, and it'll hold all that into place. And there again, I like to give it just a little shot of lubricant. Just, just, I don't know. I'm sure the gas thins that out. I don't think I'm hurting anything, but it's just what I like to do. this in carefully. We want to make sure that o-ring is seated properly. And there it is. You can feel it seated. And you can even see the little tip of it right there. So let's go out. How many turns? I wrote it down. Stock is one and a half off of the manual. So there's one and a half. There again, we got a little bit of modification. So, next, let's get this. That's, that's the next one there. And then we also have this little goodie here. Put those in. That's the throttle stop. So I think I have a lot of these left over from doing, now that I, I'm doing it, and I realize what I get in these packages. So let's put this O-ring on. There we are. I always like to keep all the old stuff there, just in case, just in case things just don't work right. There we go. And there again, that new O-ring doesn't want to seat extremely well, so I'm going to give it a little lube. Yeah, a little bit of lube in there, and that O-ring just goes right on in. There we are, and the throttle stop, and I'm just going to, you can see in there maybe, I know the lighting's not the best, but I'm just putting it so it barely sticks out, actually I'm just going to let it get flush in there, then we'll set that when it's on the bike. So I wasn't sure if this kit came with the O-ring for this 
float bowl drain plug. So let's open this up. I mean, it came with this O-ring. Let's see if this O-ring matches up with... You know what? It does come with it. So here's the number of the Honda kit that I've got that I ordered that it calls for from Rocky Mountain and it on the schematic it does not show that this is included but there it is there we go and it's very nice and we're just going to use I'm just going to go hand tight with this. There we are. Okay, we're getting down to the last few. We've got this. I know this is for the top up here. And this one sure looks like that to me. But that's good to know because it. I, when I ordered this kit, I thought... that I wasn't going to get the gasket for that. So that's good. So there we are. She's all ready to go. Now the rest of it's going to be done on the bike. We've got to mount this to the throttle cable with this and the spring and the gasket. We can do the choke. i got to clean that up. That looks terrible. Okay, there it is. And it's not too difficult to put on, I guess. I'm sure that the choke's going to read outside. Uh, that's going to probably go on like so. So that. And this is probably goes on like so. Nope. Might go on this way. No. There it is. Just like that. Just like this. There we are. We're there. Off to the bike now. Let's take it over to the bike. So, I didn't want to wait to see if I could start this motor. I'm doing a restoration on this, which is a bigger set of videos. And you can look at that. Just go to my channel. It's the 200X. It may not be on there yet because I'm filming right now and restoring right now. But the first thing is to ride the damn thing which means the carburetors are always messed up. So I've got a China Diner on here. The thing runs really good. It idles really good. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and swap this out with the OEM that we're rebuilding um, because I, I really don't want a China carburetor on here on a restoration. So let's get this one off. And get that rubber boot off. And 10 millimeter nuts off of here. And take the throttle cable and slide out. And I gotta say, I mean, these are cheapy carbs, but my gosh, they work good. I mean, if it wasn't a, if it was just a rider, I'd probably just leave that on there. And we'll put the new one, or the rebuilt. Builder in here, and just like one way it goes. Yeah. All right. So the way that the way it comes in and out. Which, let's see if I can even get it out. Is. <laughs> this pipe's not original, so I think. What we got is a, an issue with it being in a different spot than the original. So anyhow, we got it in here. Let's get it sitting right on the screws. 
just like so. And we'll put the nuts on. And put the rubber boot back on. If you notice, I don't really try to use I try to use PB the PB blaster about as little as possible when I'm doing these restorations on the pull apart because I, I, I'm you know not battling uh, fish eyes in the paint you know you get some of that silicone and uh, some of the PB blaster and stuff and you can you can play hell with paint and frame you got that stuff all over everything but it makes everything harder to get on and off and now pull this spring back again this is the the china diner get this off of here So close. I think I'm going to have to adjust this up here. Okay, got a little bit more, a little bit more play here. There we go. Get that off. Spring and the cap. Oh, that's China Diner. Put the cap. Make sure I've got the little O ring in there. Little gasket. Cap. Press the spring down. and slide on there. The rubber cap. And it should be fairly easy to slide this on in. It's a little fiddling. And I'm not going to keep you online for that. And there it is. It's all in. And the throttle is. I'm going to have to check it, but I think that I think it's just a kind of a short throw here, or it's not bottoming. Maybe I've got. I might take a look inside there. So my slide wasn't going all the way down. I, I took off the boot here. I looked inside. My slide wasn't going all the way down, but now it is. And it could be, maybe the cable wasn't seated in there properly. I'm trying to figure out what might have might have been going on there, but I'm going to reinstall it. Yeah, I don't know what it was. I just... Put it back in. Now I've got all the throttle. You can tell there was something not right there. There we go. Yep, perfect. Okay, let's put this boot back on. I'm going to leave that off until we start it. And I'm going to give this a little bit of kind of a fast idle. Hopefully not too fast. Uh, we'll see. From what I've learned over the years, and, and something to keep in mind, I don't do any one bike more than once. So, you know, <clears throat> some of the other guys out there, their videos, you know, they just go through it. There's no problems like, you know, the slide on this one. You know, they do, they've done hundreds of them or, you know, whatever. 
I can't do the same bike over and over or no one will watch the videos. So everything's new and exciting. And uh, I try to show the, you know, the things that you come up against when it's the first time for you. So I've loaded it with gas and what I pretty much see almost half the time is that when you turn the gas on, that the overflow, it starts coming out the overflow. And I think a lot of times what that is, is it just, the needle hasn't seat, hasn't, uh, you know, completely sealed into the seat. And a little bit of running, and I'd say 80% of the time it seals up. And, uh, you know, so give it a few runs. Don't be afraid of a little gas on the ground. Um, don't pull that car back off and spend the money. So, from here, let's get it started. Okay, it's, it won't stay running uh, because the idle is, needs to be adjusted. So, I'll open it up a hair. These are kind of wonky the way you start them. need to play with the richening screw lean it out or but like I said with this open we could you know they could have put all this stuff on and never rejetted it which may or may not be an issue so we'll we'll just see okay I got it all tuned as good as I can I gotta do that I'll be done up here that has the uh, kill switch on it is all it needs to be restored so there you are 200x carburetor rebuild running perfectly and by the way it did pour gas out the overflow when I had the uh, fuel on initially and then after the first run it just sealed up so this is on right now with a lot of pressure, more than I think a gas tank would give you. And all of this. So, hope that helps you get yours back together. And we'll see you on the next video. Now you can see this whole restoration on my channel with a whole bunch of other three-wheeler restorations. But I thought I'm gonna do some little shorts here of just the carburetors. I'm doing one on the rear brake. Uh, how to rebuild the master. So that's coming up too. So until next time, I'll see you later. Well, what we have here is a 200X Honda ATC front caliper that we're going to rebuild. So let's tear this apart and bend these tabs back. 101 uses for this little tiny hammer. Let's get them started. And then you can pry them. You 
you get the idea. Impact. Make sure it's on reverse. Now this is all Honda stuff, so I don't want to Throw them away, even though these rebuild kits have these. That's all Honda, and I'm going to definitely keep that. These are probably original pads. I'm, you know, not many of these ATCs that I'm coming across have gone through the front brake pads. And there's plenty of brake pad left on here, so I haven't ordered any parts yet because I don't know what I'm going to need. Now this slides freely, so that means that these aren't all rusted out. It's a good sign. Now, I've got a grease zerk. Let's see if I can get it in there. And I'm only going to be able to get a couple threads. This is just like the uh, front or the... Uh, now this is going to be an issue. I'm going to probably need a straight one. Yep, I'm going to need a straight one. This bend isn't going to work. And this one will probably work better. You're only going to get a couple threads on there. And that's all, it, all it's going to take, I think. Just all depends on how rusted up that piston is so what we're going to do here and a grease gun and pop that on and let's see if we can get that piston to come out coming out the side of it then there we go see the piston coming out of there yeah it keeps on coming come on baby there you are so that worked out real well just doesn't want to I'll get that out of there you can see it's a little a little sideways so we get it centered and get that out of there clean all this up Sorry for that big delay. Now, something I pointed out before, but I use a lot of paper towels. It saves my regular towels from getting so much grease on them that I can't run them through the, through the washing machine without thinking I'm gonna gum stuff up. So I keep my towels pretty clean. There's gonna be a lot of grease in here and there it is all that 
grease in there, but actually, um, this will clean up no problem. What you don't want is really, really heavy pitting that the seal may not be able to keep brake fluid from passing by with a lot of corrosion. So we'll clean all this up. I'm going to clean this whole uh, piece up here. And then we'll come back. And look at that. That just came out in one glob because the uh, brake fluid was in there. Kind of let it release. Okay, a little bit of PB Blaster and a lot of oomph. And we'll get this pen out. That's how we get That is how we get this piece off, I assume. And behind this rubber cap, there's an Allen to get this shaft off. And I want to completely disassemble it, so we're going to do that. And there again, these things are on there so tight, being on there forever. As you can see, we're, there we go. And now, should be able to get this. There's a washer there. I want to memorialize how this goes. So there's a washer. <clears throat> And I might have to go back and look at my video. So we'll get that. We'll pull this out. I believe the rebuild kit comes with this rubber boot here. All right, I put it back together so I could get this orientation right. This is a split washer or lock washer. And there's a washer here, which I believe is a flat washer. And I know this is correct because that would be the bumper. And there you have it. And then that's how it mounts onto mounts onto the front end. And it comes out comes out through the front here. And it wasn't easy to get out. I believe the rubber was holding it up. So anyhow, there's your there's that part. So we're getting down to it. Really, I think just this bleeder. And then I can wash this thing up. Here is the kit that I ordered. Now, I don't... I, I did everything I could. There's really not much in OEM that's available. There's a couple of rubber pieces. There's the seal. There is, I believe, this rubber piece. But, you know, th I'm going to take this kit here and then... I'm going to add to that kit this OEM seal because the seal is really the biggest part. So, got to wait for all that to come, but we'll clean everything up in the meantime. Um, Chico has been a little bit uh, overworked. He's got all these parts coming for the brake system on this. And he feels like he gets no, you know, accolades or nobody cares. It's just, he just does this amazing job of ordering parts, you know, because he is the parts manager. So I thought I'd give him a little air time. Right, Chico? Yeah. Yeah, he wants a little air time. So there you go. All right, keep those parts coming, Chico, because we, we can't be held up. All right? Okay. Chico brought me... Uh, some parts that came in today. So let's see what I got here. Uh -huh. So I've got the rear master from k and Let's see what's in it. I was... <clears throat> yeah, it's got the little C-clip in it. Got a 
the little cat, little rubber. Um, so we are set to go. We'll get this assembled here. After cleaning this up, I had to work hard to get all of the grease out, but I've got all the grease out. There's not even a trace. So that's cleaned. The top cap's cleaned. The reservoir and hose. I'm going to clean this up. But our next step is to mirror this. We're going to Notice where the tall part of that rides. It, it actually is on this side. You can see there's a ridge. This is taller than this side. So, as I can see, it goes right in there. And that makes sense. It's, it's like a seal on a motorcycle uh, fork or anything. This area here is meant to keep oil in. And this is flat. So the concave area goes towards the towards the, the actual fluid, and then this is on the other side. And so what we do is lube it up. And I'm putting down a plastic bag just to keep all the brake fluid from getting all over my towels. Real particular about what's in my towels because that goes into your washing machine if your girlfriend will let you use the washing machine. So get that lubed up. Bring the piston over here and get a little bit of that on there. And then just double check because once you've got it on, it's not going to come back off very easy. There again, that's the that's how you want it. That's not going to be easy to get this on over. Yeah. This is not going to go on super easy. And it was a bear. Probably put holes in these gloves, but that's okay. I got it on, and you can spin it. If it spins and it's got a point down here, not on that side, then you're good. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to back off these nuts. I'm going to get this arm uh, disassembled. Back this nut off. Hold it with a screwdriver. go Put all this stuff to the side I'm going to go ahead and take this other nut off there's the boot which we have a new one there's the c-clip we have a new one but this washer this whole piece right here is all one there's no getting this washer off so we're going to clean these up so this next step i'm going to do is not necessary i'm going to replate these and i've got a custom setup uh, that that'll bring me back to I, I don't want it quite this gold but i don't want it silver um, i want it to look its age i want it to look like it sat in someone's garage for 40 years and uh you can see the this is fairly silver, so each one is going to be custom plated to the color that I'm seeing right here, but it'll get rid of all the corrosion and make it look like it's new. And here's my plating setup. I'm not going to go into all this. I've done it in all of my other videos, so you can go back and look at some of my other restorations, see the plating, but I'll show you the, uh, the parts at, uh, after they've been plated. There's the, the gold. Looking good. 
and the silver. This is for the front caliper I'm rebuilding also. I'm not going to do, I don't know if I'm going to do a video on that. But anyhow, stay with the rear master cylinder. And that's the plating. Got to put a little lubrication, so I got a little bit of uh, brake fluid. Uh, wipe the cylinder down inside. Now the cylinder itself, I don't want to get any of this on the black paint because I'm going to try and keep the original paint. But the cylinder was nice inside. Um, it had a little corrosion here or there, but totally, uh, you know, workable. And I didn't uh, have to do any sort of grinding or anything on the surface itself. So, the first step is put the spring and this little cup. I'm going to get a little bit more brake fluid here. I'm going to get that cup good and lubed up. follow this cup we're going to push it in with the piston and there we go and the piston ought to yep piston goes right in and from there we're going to put this in and then hold it which this is you know, really difficult to do. So I'm still holding it in. I'm going to try and get as much for you to see as possible. But this is now that wasn't as difficult as it seemed but it wasn't easy so but we've got the piston in we've got the c-clip the retaining c-clip now wipe my hands off really good i don't want any of that brake fluid like i said getting on this black so we've got i i didn't end up ordering a new o-ring here and I think I'm gonna be okay I'm pretty sure so we're gonna finish up this part with the new boot here's the old one and all of this new looking hardware so we'll put this outer boot on there we go Let's seat it it's starting to look good isn't it now the next thing is first nut and I've got a picture of the old setup as it came off so I'm going to see how far this rides up in here so I can get it really close. So, from what I can see, there's about about four or five threads. So about there, about there maybe. And there it is. Now this. And should fit in there, but I do see that I, by tightening this, I kind of bent this a little bit, but that's, that's easily fixed. And uh, just hold it, bend it back, and there we have it. And another thing I did, I had to spread it a tad. And I think most of this is just the uh, 
that's lined up. But maybe I gotta spread it a little bit more. Gotta make sure this works before we go down there and install it. So I'll get this, I'll get that figured out. Here's what I found. A couple of little burrs here. So I'll just file those off. And look at that. Perfect. Get the hose back on. I lubricated that up a little bit with the brake fluid. Get these nice gold replated screws in there. And there it is. I'm thinking I might paint this with a little bit of flat black. Just make it look a little bit better. Chico advised me today that there were new parts that have arrived. He unpackaged them for me. Let's put them out here nicely. So we're going to put that back rear caliper on and we're going to bleed the brakes that we just got done rebuilding. I noticed that the rear caliper in the front master is made by this Matty, which I'm sure it's China, but I haven't had good luck with these when I was doing a CB Custom. A 900 custom that I bought three of them and none of them worked so maybe this Matty which is a different company maybe these will work out we'll just have to see so this is kind of something that you might uh, follow along so if we if we end up getting this uh, stuff to all work properly then uh, it's maybe a you know kind of a cheap China diner that you can actually know at least it worked for me so let's see how that, how that pans out. Otherwise, I'm going to I'm going to have Chico's butt. I'm going to have him uh, return this stuff. I'm tired of him buying stuff and then just you know, we just sit on it. You know, we've had words before me and Chico. So I cleaned up the stock hose and they make an aftermarket. You know, you could make get one made, but uh, I sure want to stay with the stock if I can. So I'll clean this up and then I'm going to clean it out with uh, some brake cleaner and we will install it. I have put a rear fender seat and tank off of another 200X I've got. We're ready to take it for a ride. We've got the rear brakes, that's all I need. So we're going to just, and we're going to not take it on a big heavy ride, just down the street. I also loosened the chain. There's Quite a few kinks in it that aren't straightening out so it was really tight so let's get it started
Now that it's cooled down, I'm going to do a valve adjustment and I'm going to do the front brake. I'm going to get that all working and then give it another good test. But the front brake parts have just come in. Chico just notified me. Chico, you overpaid for these parts. Now, do you have a buddy or something? Huh? Have you got a buddy? Have you got a buddy that you're, you're, you're buying, you know, buying parts for way more and then he's giving you a kickback? I bet. I think so. Oh, don't look away. You know. You know. Yeah. Well, I'm going to be watching you like a hawk. Mm-hmm. And this is the brake parts that Chico just brought me. And there's where it's going to go in. So I think that's my next step. That, a valve adjustment, and uh, probably an oil change also. The valves are adjusted. I'm going to warm it up so that I can change the oil. And I did a cam chain adjustment. That sounds good. It's hard to tell in these videos, you know. But I'm probably going to do a, a little bit of a top end. I'm probably going to hone it and re-ring it. And, uh, you know, just check the valves out, check the seals out, all that stuff while I've got it down. So, uh, but first I'm going to change the oil uh, and run it again. And just make sure there's no problems in the bottom end or anything weird comes up. So I'm going to give it a really kind of a long ride and then I'll feel good about proceeding with the restoration. parts are in so let's put this back together this is <clears throat> this is the original OEM stuff that I plated so I'm not going to use the Chinese stuff even though they look great but as you can see on the end they don't have the Honda um, little logo as you see here this one's got the you know the, it's like an eight two circles, whatever you want to call it, but uh, I'm going to use the original stuff there, so we'll put those things aside, and I've got a couple of things here. I'm going to use this rubber boot on the OEM. There we are. Put that one aside. I've got this in another spot, and here that is, and you can see it is not the same, but I'm going to use the rubber seal. So from here, the first thing is to put in the Honda main seal, and then I'm going to use the aftermarket, uh, just a little dust seal. And I'm just using a little pick to get that out. And you can see it's a little bit of... A little bit of cleaning is going to be needed in here. This is uh, got a little bit of gunk and corrosion. So we'll clean that, both of these up when we get both of the seals out. And I'm just using a pick to get that out. So now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to clean this up as well as I can. Um, may... I may get in there with a like a rotary brush. Really want to get that clean so it seals and it isn't. If it keeps itself from seating, then it'll be a bear to get that piston in. So I want to get all that out of there. I got it clean, and I did use. I've got these somewhat flexible wheels, and they they're good for polishing up the surface in there where there might be some corrosion but it also i was able to get in there and do this 
And then I also took a polishing wheel. I probably should have used a clean one. Uh, but anyway, I've got it cleaned up in there. And it's kind of hard to see probably. Uh, but most of the corrosion's out. And especially the, uh, the larger seal, the main seal. I've got that really clean in there. And then I have to go back and clean everything up again. You need it absolutely clean. And then I clean the towel, and now we're back to getting it back together. A little trick I learned from, I can't remember who, but when you open up anything, brake fluid, oil, just poke a little hole in the silver cap there. That way you can kind of, you know, do a, a drop or two instead of just having it pour out. Now, because I'm really going for the total rebuild here, and... I'm going for, you know, the original look. I, I don't, I want this to look like it's never been opened. And that's not <clears throat> exactly going to be 100%. But if I'm going to get brake fluid on this uh, black paint here, then I'm going to end up painting this. And it never comes out as well as this is right here. When I clean this up and put some go-go juice on it, this is going to look, it's going to look perfect. Uh, as if it sat in the garage under a tarp for 47 years. So what I've got to do is I've got to lube up the seals uh, without getting a bunch of stuff on here. And, and if I do get it, then I'm going to immediately get the uh, brake fluid off of it. So here we go. This is the main seal. I'm just using a little bit of brake fluid and some paper towels keeping it off my fingers so that when I grab the housing I'm not and then this just goes in and falls into that groove And there again, got it on my fingers now. And it off of there. Very sparing. And it just falls in there. And you give it a little lubrication. Being very careful not to put that. Brake fluid on that black paint. Got that. Got that seal's ready to go in. Chico says I'm way too anal. Chico don't know nothing. He's just a parts manager. How hard is it to order parts? Okay, so. Very simple, but tedious. There it is. Both seals are in. So now I'll clean my hands. I'll probably even wash them. And we're... Keep this because we're probably going to use it for lubricating the piston. All right. Get the piston here. And we're just going to see just how hard this is going to be going in with these new seals. Put it right down through the bottom here. Now it looks like it passed through the first seal fairly easily. And there it is, piece of cake. All right, the piston's in. Now we're gonna put the brackets back together. Well, 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 you know, wouldn't you have, <sighs> I didn't put in the Honda one, I put in the aftermarket. So I am going to, I had to take the piston out. I used 
a little compressed air down through the bleeder uh, and held the, uh, basically I held my finger over this where the banjo boat goes and then I put my little small and it popped it right out. So now we'll put in the OEM Honda stuff. And we got that in, a little lubrication. So let's put the piston back in. Make sure nothing fell in there. Make sure there's no brake fluid anywhere. Yeah, even on my fingers. And a little bit brake fluid on the piston this time. Something tells me it's going to be a little tougher to get in with the OEM. I th it seemed a little too easy to me. So it could not could be the same. It could be no nope. same. So I bet that aftermarket seal would have worked just fine. But OEM, OEM, OEM. Oh my gosh, OEM. Next, we're going to put the anti-rattle shield in. Easier said than done. But it'll go. And that's in there. Now, I installed the rubber boot. It goes on this piston, but it's got to go in first. And then this is obviously to hold grease. Uh, so we're going to lube this up good before we send it home. But hopefully, we'll be able to... There we go. Yep. I'm going to put a little bit of oil on this. Just... To get it to slide in that seal a little better. And see if that works. Yep. So that's going through there like so. And you'll be able to get some threads on that bracket. But. We'll just have to see how that works. Now this, just a little, just enough to get it to go through here. Get it started and I'll probably be able to push it through with a screwdriver without poking a hole in the end of it. There we go. Okay, so we got that. And we'll, of course, we need to put a little bit of lube on this so it slides. Basically, it's gonna, it's gonna have to move like so. And there's a little seal on it, so I think I'll just pop a little bit of grease in there. And I'm just going to use this. It's no big deal. I'm just doing a little bit. And I'm actually not going to do it that way. I'm going to put a little in the boot itself. And then slide the pin in. I just used a little pick and I just loaded a little in there. And there we go. Just the boot itself might makes it want to return. And so I'm going to do a little bit of that with this. Oh, it's a goop. Cooked it up a little bit in there, and then I'm going to make sure I've got some in this groove. 
And that groove is meant to hold excess grease so that there's always a, a little bit of grease in there. I don't want to overdo it. Brake pads and grease don't mix. Okay, so I'm going to probably just take a straight edge and take off the excess. There we go. So let's put this home. Again, I want to keep everything super clean. So. So let's see how hard it's going to be to get that bracket on. All right, after fiddling, I've got, I believe I've got this seal seated. And I've got it seated on, you can see it here. I've got it seated around here. I've got all the grease off. A lot of fiddling. So now we're ready to put the bracket on. So I would say that this conical seal would go like so. And then our little OEM and we would probably be looking at at that. That could be that could be our bracket. These two don't line up. These two don't line up. These are the only two to line up, so it it couldn't go this way, so it's just gotta go this way. So let's get it started. This one started. We'll tighten those up. There it is, all tightened up. I'm going to wait to put that cap on till I get the rest of the parts together. I went ahead and put it on just so it, I don't get any grease all over everything. All right, and lay. One brake pad there. They are unidirectional, so not a problem. As you see, no difference. That one there and that one there. Get our nice OEM. One thing I want to make sure of is that, well, it can only go on one way. I don't want this to be on backwards. Hmm. I'll have to look. Okay, so the microfish shows that these tabs right here face down, facing down to the, to the pad. Let's see if these all line up. Allow me to tighten them. There's a little resistance because of the little spring plate that's down in here. And uh, that's what it's designed to do. Give it just a little tension. You can see these have a little tension and they don't rattle. That's nice. Brake pad. So we've got a little gap there.
and we are close to being done. So, this was uh, 14 to 18 foot pounds in this, behind this cap. So, I figure 14 is probably going to be good on this. We'll torque that. hold it that's probably good yeah that's good yeah they're right at that anyway there we go okay look at that now I've just temporarily installed these. I'm going to go ahead and tighten this up. That's snug. A little dust cap on it. And magically, we have a brand new looking caliper. So there it is. There's the, there's the finished caliper. All the plating and the rebuild parts. Very, very nice looking on your ATC 200X. In an effort to keep these videos <clears throat> to a, you know, a length that's not an hour, I am going to cut this one right here and call it part one. So what we've done is we have done a lot of maintenance items, valve adjust, carburetor rebuild. Also, I did the caliper in the front and I did the rear master. Um, so that is a lot. And I bet this is still going to be a long video just, just cutting it here. So we're through with the first one. And uh, Chico has ordered everything up to this point, but we're going to have to order more once we dive into this a little bit more. So until the next video, um, we will see you later.